they're out of gas. Well, that's all right. We still have our gas rationing card. We've got gas rationing card? Why, a C card wouldn't help us here. Oh, you... You don't have to lose your temper. I'm sorry. I... You are sorry. You are sorry about that redhead in the auto court. You are sorry about that waitress in the barbecue stand. I suppose you are sorry about talking me into taking this road instead of the main road. Well, I'm sorry that I'm sorry, but if you're sorry, you can't help being sorry. No, oh, get out of here. Maybe someday you'll be sorry. A thousand miles from nowhere. Well, here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. And don't say you're sorry. <sighs> Worried, aren't you? Are you? Well, it must be 115 in the shade. How about a drink of water? That's a good idea. I'll go right now. Okay. Ollie. What? I can see the back end of a truck. That's no truck. That's me. The back end of a truck. I'm sorry. I... Ollie. What? I see a gas station. Where? Right in here. See? Look, it's right in there. See it? Stanley, we're saved. Well, how are we going to get this thing over there? You see, we Well, can't... that's simple. One of us will push and the other will steer. I never thought of that. We'll... Hey! What? Not too fast. I won't. When you start pushing, don't push over 35 miles an hour. All right, let's go. Hey, Ollie. What? Do you mind if I stop a minute? All right. Okay, Ollie, I'm ready. Well, it's about time. What would you have done if I hadn't had presence of mind enough to have you push me? I haven't the slightest idea. I guess the only thing I could have done, if I'd have gone to the gas station... Who's I pushing think... this thing? Oh, I forgot to tell you. See, I borrowed a mule down the road. You remember when we stopped? Well, I guess a mule's as good as a donkey any day. It certainly is. You're absolutely... What do you mean, as good as... <laughs> Get out and find the attendant. I'm sorry, Ollie. Sorry for what? Close for the duration. Now what are we going to do? Hey, there's a car coming. Let's flag him down. Yeah, maybe we can borrow some gas. Look, 
Look, here's a, here's a truck coming. Oh, it's no use. They won't stop for us in this desert. Say, why don't you lie down and pretend you fainted? Then he's bound to stop. He wouldn't let anybody faint on the desert. At last, you're using your brain. Hurry up and faint. He's getting closer. All right. Yeah. Could you spare us a gallon of gas? A gallon? What are you trying to do, weigh in this thing? <laughs> well, you see, we made a slight miscalculation in regards to our supply. Yeah, he means we ran out of gas, didn't you? Yes. Well, gentlemen, the right man just came along. You're facing Chester Wright, the inventor of the little wonder gas pill, the answer to the rationing problem. This is the 10-gallon size, this is the 5-gallon size. And this, gentlemen, is a gallon can of water. Sample it, if you please. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's water, all right. And now, gentlemen, you're going to see a demonstration of the eighth wonder of the world. I'm going to take some of these pellets and place them in the can of water you just sampled. Um, open your gas tank. Oh, yes, you. I'm sorry. Gasoline. Just pour it into your tank, gentlemen. Now, step on the starter. Mister, you have saved us from an untimely end. Yes, sir, we might have died. <laughs> How much do we owe you? Oh, forget it, my friends. Just regard it as a little courtesy of the road. Thank you. Thank you very much. Laurel and Hardy, the original Suit Suit Band. Well, we are one of the wonders of the age ourselves. The only two-man band in the world. The equal to Glenn Miller, Harry James, and Spike Jones. <laughs> well, we might get together. I was on my way to Washington to hand these over to the government, but uh, we might pick up a few bucks on the way. You mean make some money? Sure, we can make a lot of dough together. How, Mr. Wright? Well, there's a little carnival troupe opening up tomorrow in Midvale, just a few miles from here. We can get a location, and with your band to attract the crowd, we can trim. <laughs> I mean, we can sell every sucker. <laughs> I mean, every person in town. What do you say, fellas? 50-50? Well, we could use some money. Okay, fellas, see you in Midvale. Goodbye. 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 Well, all of our troubles are over, Stanley. Yes, sir. And, and we won't need this ration book anymore, will we? Not as long as there's water. That's just what I thought. <laughs> so the quicker we get to the town, we'll have... <laughs>
we're going to spread a load of jam. Harry James records our store got in this morning. Oh, you're in the music business? Sort of. I sing in the choir, too. <laughs> well, what's holding us back, sister? Well, all right, Jackson. Well, all right. <laughs> <laughs> people of Midvale, the greatest invention of the 20th century. What is the most important question today? Transportation. Which brings us to the question of gas rationing. Out of the laboratories has come a miracle. The little wonder gas pill. Now you simply drop one of these pills into a gallon of water and you have a gallon of gas. Not ordinary gas, but gas of the highest quality. Now this is the five gallon size, and this is the 10 gallon size. I could sell it to you for a dollar a gallon, but no. The 10 gallon size sells for two dollars. The five gallon size sells for one dollar. Who wants one? I'll take the large size. I'll take 10 gallons. Yes, sir. Uh, give me 10. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. How do we know that stuff's on the level? I perceive that you have a water bag on your shoulder. Is there water in it? Yeah, full of it. Put this in it. I dare you. It smells like gasoline. Folks, the five-gallon size or the ten-gallon size? That's Who enough for me. One? Give me ten. There you are, sir. Give me ten gallons. Yes, ma'am. Give me ten gallons. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Give you me and you, thank me. All right, folks. Don't count. It's another friend, buddy. There you are. Here's your pill. Here's your pill. Here's your pill. Are you insinuating that we are hoodwinking the public? I dropped one of these little wonder gas pills into a bucket of water, poured it into the tank of the car, and now, and now look at me. <laughs> 
Inspector McNeil of the State Bunko Squad. I've been trailing these two across the country for five days. Jail's too good for these robbers. We ought to take care of ourselves. You're right. He can't see me. We want our time. Now, folks, don't let your tempers boil over. These men will be dealt with by the law. What I can't understand is why did you pretend to be a county detective unless the gas bills didn't have the desired effect? What do you suppose is running this car at the present time? He's right, Ollie. We're going okay. Well, what happened to the man's car? Well, he probably got mixed up in the directions or there was something else wrong with this car. How much we take in? Uh, $223. I'll take my half now. All right. <laughs> there you are. Hey, wait a minute, fellas. What's the matter? Didn't I split the money 50-50? That's not it. We gotta go back. Go, go back? back? Why? Why? This purse. It belongs to a little girl back in Midvale. I was holding it for her. Well, if anyone sees us in Midvale, they'll throw us all into the jug. And they'll find out that you're really not an officer. How am I gonna get this back to her? I'll take it. How did you get here? I got into the back of the trailer when you were leaving the carnival. The question now is, how do I get back to Midvale? Oh, I got an idea. You two fellas drive ahead to the place where I park my station wagon. We'll ride back in the trailer. Come on, baby. I'll explain everything to you in words of one syllable. No wonder you wanted to go back to Midvale. Why? Well, because the girl lives there, and he's never mind why. Look, you're doing 70 miles an hour. I'm not doing 70 miles an hour. I'm not even doing 50 miles an hour. In fact, I'm not even doing 35 miles an hour. Well, it says there, 70. That speedometer's stuck. Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know that. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you look where you're going? <laughs> I'll get it. Thank you. Hey, what's this? It's a picture taken when Mother put through a real estate deal on our property. Oh, your folks got money? I have a rich aunt in Boston. She bought the property for Mother. Uh, what kind of a deal was this? Mother puts in her property in $10,000, and the Eastern financiers put in $15,000. Seems to me I've seen one of those faces before someplace. It's around a racetrack. Uh, Louisville. A horse player named, uh, One Horse Bates. You might let me in on this. Honey, I'm afraid your poor old gray-haired mother has been sadly chipped. There's my car, baby. Hop in. I gotta go up and see the Rover boys. Boys? I gotta drive this girl back to Midvale. Back to Midvale? Isn't there any other way she could return? Well, there's more to it than that. From what she tells me, her mother was chipped out of $10,000. That's a lot of dough. Yeah, a lot of money, too. Yes, and it's worth going after. Now, I have a hunch who the gang is, and I'm gonna try and get it back. You're a mighty swell guy to try and get that money back for her. Yes, and anything we can do to help you, you know. That's the ticket. I knew I could count on you boys. Now, stay right on this route, and I'll catch you before long. Right-o. Okie dokie. <laughs> Stanley, do you believe in love at first sight? Well, it saves a lot of time. Mr. Cass, this gentleman seems to think that Mother has been swindled in the land deal. This is Mr... <laughs> I guess I don't even know your name. Oh, we never got around to that. Right is the name, Chester Wright. I'm very glad to meet you, sir. Though I'm quite certain that you're mistaken. The money is in my safe. Yeah, ten will get you twenty that it isn't. And a right is never wrong. Huh. Mr. Wright, I hope you're wrong. Aha. There, you see? And the signatures. Just as I put it into my safe, Mr. Wright. Oh, sure, sure. Now, who's going to open it? Why, I think Miss Cowan should open it, since she will someday be the owner of the property. 
Why, I don't understand it. I put that money in the envelope myself and sealed it. It was never out of my sight until I put it into the safe. Look, he's even used a copy of the Daily Planet. He never dropped it on the floor? Yes, now that I think of it. But he initialed it before he dropped it, and when he picked it up, the initials were still there. Why, of course, that's known as the old convincer. The phony envelope was initialed before he came in the office. I'm going down to tell the chief of police. I'd like to break their necks. I only hope the police catch up with them. Now, what good would that do? Even if the police arrested them, they'd only spend the money on lawyers to defend them. Then, if you win, you lose. Maybe. But I've been thinking. I'm going after that money. What do you mean? Well, money lost through larceny can often be recovered the same way. Remember I told you I recognized one of those faces? A horse player? Well, what track opens next week? New Orleans. And that's where I'm heading. Fine. I'll go along with you. Oh. You know, if we hadn't run out of gas on the desert, Chester would have never gone to Midvale. And he would never have met her. And now he's going to recover her money. To her, he's a real hepcat. Right in the groove. And they'll fall in love. Get married and live in a cottage bowered with roses. A country estate. You know, we could work for them, and we could live in peace and contentment. You paint a pretty picture, Stanley. They could name their first baby Stanley. What's the matter with Oliver? Stanley's nice name. Oliver. Well, they could have twins. We'll suggest that to them. What's my point, baby? Six. You know you always shoot six, this Corky. My name is Colonel Watterson Bixby of Leaping Frog, Amarillo County, Texas, sir. Oh, how do you do, Colonel? We've assigned the governor's suite to your party. I hope you like it. You all are most kind, sir. Okay, sister, there's your two bits. If I keep on playing this game, you'll be wearing mink. This is my secretary, Mr. Chester Wright. And this is my butler, valet, and general factotum, Potts. Care those bags upstairs and don't take no for an answer. Yes, sir. I have some valuables I'd like to entrust to your care, sir. This one contains $20,000 in currency and this some very valuable contracts and documents. Oh, they'll be perfectly safe, I assure you. Just a moment, I'll give you a receipt. My, what a pretty little girl. Uh, how do you do, miss? Uh, let me see. I don't remember your name, but I know we've met. <laughs> ah, there goes the colonel again. And he's got the most jealous wife in the whole state of Texas. That's Corcoran, one of the men at the desk. Yeah, I recognized him from his picture. Okay, you two, break it up. Susan, we'll see you later upstairs. Goodbye, miss. You all care for the races, gentlemen? I'm sorry, sir, but business prevents that pleasure. After you, sir. Uh. Corcoran, you might at least have knocked. Shh. Dorcas, ready money, just walked in the hotel. 
Kale, Mazuma, Mula? The old lettuce and plenty of it. A Texas Casanova by the name of Colonel Waterson Bixby. And a sucker for dames. That's nothing. So are you. Dawkus, this is business. Listen. Well, boys, we've been in this joint for five minutes and we've already contacted the interested parties. And are they interested? Yeah, but haven't you? Uh, we spent a lot of money to put over this deal. Say, $10,000 is a lot of hay. It's a lot of money, too. Shh. He's got the corner suite down the hall. Get him in here, and I'll watch for your drink order down at the bar. Then I'll walk in at the right time. Get it? And don't forget to use your southern accent. Does you all mean like this, honey? Fine, that's it. I'll be right back. So strong, so gallant. Come sit here beside me. Why? Why, I still feel a little faint. I'll go get a doctor if you like. Oh, oh, let us have some drinks. Shall I order a couple of sash racks? I'm sorry, lady, but I don't drink. You don't drink? I mean, you all don't drink. Uh-uh. Oh, would you mind if I had a little snifter? I mean, a little syrup. Certainly not. Oh, would you mind pouring it for me? Uh, see, I've sweetened it. One little sip. Uh-uh. Just for poor little me? Just one little sip? Well, just one. You know, that's a bit of all right. I declare for Texan, you all have a mighty funny dialect, Colonel. Colonel? Well, aren't you Colonel Watson Bixby? No, I'm his valet. What? Yeah, my name is Potts. Potts? Yeah, P-O-R-T-S, Potts. Come in. Oh, no, that's my husband. Oh. Yeah. No, 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 Colonel Watterson Bixby of Amarillo County, Texas, my fair lady. As your neighbor down the hall, I've come to present my regards and convey my felicitations. Colonel Watterson Bixby, I'm almighty proud to meet you all. Come right in. Thank you, ma'am. My name is Mary Lou, Colonel. What a pretty name. Can I call you Mary? Please do. And you just call me Watty. Watty? <laughs> How about a drink? Shall I order a couple of Sazeracs? A couple? Well, madam, that's just a three furlong dash to a four-year-old. Order a dozen. And it shall be Colonel Watterson Bixby's pleasure, my little magnolia blossom. A dozen Sazeracs for 807, please. Mary, is that hard lick I see on yonder table? But that is brandy, Colonel, and I have ordered absinthe. The perfect chaser. Permit me. To the fairest flower in the garden of southern womanhood. Down, Colonel. Thank you. Um. I've heard no woman can resist you, Waddy. Mary, you're going to have a lot of fun proving it. You mind if I smoke? Not at all. Mm. Thank you. Mm. 
Cigarette? Oh, no, thank you. Light? Thank you. <laughs> Things are moving? Yeah. Oliver has just walked into the spider's web. Well, I found the third member of the party. He's running a showboat nightclub on the river. Oh, that's fine. That's where you come in. What do you mean? Well, uh, I've sort of been worrying for fear you'd be in the way. Uh, if we got in a jam, that is. I'll stick with you boys. Oh, well, don't you see? Nightclub, singing, that's your racket. You get a job and pay the way for us, and we'll move right in and clean out the whole gang. You mean you want me to walk out before I get the money? Oh. Does that mean you... you still don't trust me? No. Because if you don't, well... we... might as well call the whole thing off. Don't be silly. I trust you, Chester. Don't think I'm not grateful. I'll do as you say. Sit down, Mary Lou. Delicious nectar. Mary Lou, absent makes the heart grow fonder. <laughs> <laughs> Hold your breath and take nine sips of water. Thank you, Colonel. Wally, you have lovely hands. Thank you, Mary. Impulsive little creature, aren't you, darling? Uh, shall, shall we all have some music now? I don't mind if I do. Gypsy in me. Kiss me, my little dove. So. I'll find you, my wife, in the arms of another man. Lionel, I can explain everything. You can explain? But, sir, you don't understand. I understand everything, sir. I should kill you both, and perhaps I will. Oh, it was nothing. Nothing? You call it nothing when I find this Casanova making violent love to you? Why, I'll... Oh. Oh. And now, Colonel Watterson Bixby, I'll deal with you. 
I'm going to name you co-respondent in my divorce case against my wife. No, no. Think of my position in society. I'm in no mood for trifling. Can't this little matter be adjusted? Sir, you dare to offer me money? Well, just between two southern gentlemen. Money for my wife? For my honor? For my love? For my children? Yo, poor little innocent babes. After all, why should the sins of the father be visited upon the children? How much? Ten thousand dollars, sir. Ten thousand dollars. Ten years in jail is more like it, my fine feathered friend. Who are you? Sheriff Jonathan Bates of Midvale County. I've got a warrant for your arrest for swindling Mrs. Audrey Cowan out of $10,000. You can't get away with this. Oh, no? Deputy. Yes, Sheriff. Have you got the extradition papers? Everything legal. Signed by the governor. Put the handcuffs on him. Now, wait a minute, fellas. This can be fixed. Are you trying to bribe an officer of the law? I wouldn't think of that for a minute. But you've got to realize, gents, this is just a business deal that went wrong. I'll refund the money and save further trouble and expense. I'll turn my share of the money over to you, and you can give it back to Mrs. Cowan. Well, the main thing is to get the money back. Hand it over. Here's 5000 That was my split. What happened to the other $5,000? My partner, Bennett, has it. Your partner was the one tipped us off. You had all the dough. So that's where the squawk comes from. Your partner, Bennett. Bennett. Put him up. So you two cheap grifters thought you could put something over. I got a notion to drill you. Hand back that dough, smart guys. Hand it over. We were only fooling. They call love Red biology And astrology And every solemn lovelorn column There's only one way to beat it Go out and meet it I gotta see for myself That love is really so grand My information is all second hand No one's telling me I gotta see for myself in my eye, I got a sample, an ample supply, in proximity, I gotta see for myself, can't believe I was so naive, never minding what I missed, right now I have to qualify, I wanna be she who gets kissed, I gotta see for myself, I gotta get in the throes, you needn't tell me I'm heading for woe. Are you kidding me? I gotta see for myself. Well, what do you say, Tony? No, this is not my racket. Of this, I know from nothing. I'll give you a half interest. All I need is five grand to open the show. Five grand's a lot of money. Sometimes it takes me a whole week to make five grand.
Isn't he going to help you, Mr. Bennett? No dice. I had plans, Susan. I was going to make a big star out of you. I know you had the stuff the first time I saw you. Would uh, Tony Queen put up the money if he thought he had a sure thing? <laughs> if Tony thought he had a sense, he'd kick in with plenty. Wish I could help you. Thanks, anyway. You don't happen to have any money in your family, do you? Oh, I have an aunt in Boston who has quite a lot, but that's Boston. Yeah, it doesn't do us much good when I figured open it a couple of nights. Well, never mind any more rehearsals for the present, honey. I'm out. Well, boys, this has gone far enough. I'll just call that $2 bet. What have you got? Two pairs. Why, you dummy, you've got four aces. Just a minute, boys. <laughs> Straight flush. What's the good news, Susan? Bennett had Tony Queen down this morning, trying to get him to put some money in the show. But nothing doing. He wouldn't go for it, huh? No. Bennett said he could get all the money in the world from him for a sure thing, but this is evidently a little too legitimate. He even tried to promote me. What'd you say to that? I told him the only one in my family with money was an aunt in Boston. Did you say you have a rich aunt in Boston? Why, yes. <laughs> Honey, your rich aunt from Boston arrived in town this morning. Gee, that's swell. She came here to visit her childhood sweetheart, Colonel Watterson Bixby of Amarillo County, Texas. But where is she? We could go and get her. Then we'd clean up the gang. She's right here. Where? Not me. I'm not going to be a dame. Turn around. How do I look? Absolutely perfect. Let's go and show Chester. Uh, wait just a minute. What? Let me see you walk. All right? Not like that. Like this. Simple. Show me that again. Now let's see you do it. Annie, say you look great. Now, don't forget, your name is Emily Cartwright. Emily Cartwright. Come on, boys, it's late. We gotta hurry. Come on, Emmy. Not you, it's me, absolutely. Oh, go on. Night winds blew a trumpet fanfare, and the scene was set. Call it fantasy, it was real to me. Through the river's rippling curtain, I can see it yet. It's a scene I'll never forget. The moon kissed the Mississippi last night. Did you see the moment you kissed me? The stars danced a little polka last night. Yes, it's true. And did you see them too? Concerto in B flat may sound fantastic, but you can quote me, I can vouch for that. The moon kissed the Mississippi last night. Did you see the 
moment you kissed me. Clever, isn't she? I agree. And that's the only reason, Miss Emily, I'm considering even selling you a piece of this show. I want her to have the best possible production. Well, of course, you know, I wouldn't consider this investment if it wasn't for Susan's future. Would I, Bob? No. <laughs> she is charming and clever, Miss Emily. I hope you don't mind me calling you Miss Emily. Oh, no, not at all. You know, I just love the way you show people carry on. <laughs> For $5,000, I'll give you 49% of the show. What do you think, Chester? Well, it, uh, it sounds like a sound business venture to me. That's splendid. When shall we draw up the papers? Well, I suggest... No, that... no, sugar pie, I wouldn't be too hasty. This theater business is very risky. I remember when I was young, I was hooked. Uh, I mean, I invested $50,000 in a musical show. That, of course, my dear, was before I met you. Well, remember, Turtle Dove, it's for Susan. And I want her to have every opportunity. I know, Lammy Pie, but Mr. Roger Billingham, the biggest theatrical producer in New York, is a personal friend of mine. And I'm sure that I could interest him in Susan. Well, you know best. Pardon me, Miss Emily. I'd like to talk to the Colonel privately. Colonel, there are a few things I must explain to you. <laughs> But be firm, Watty. Look, Colonel, I don't want anything to go wrong with this deal. This also means quite a lot to me. I have to protect my money. I, I mean my future wife's money. Oh, I get it. Yeah, I fully understand. How about a hundred bucks? <gasps> oh. <clears throat> Well, Colonel Bixby has changed his mind. He now feels the proposition is an excellent one. Good. Chester, you take care of the details. Uh, just a minute. I just happen to think that Emily won't have full control of the show. Only 49%. Thank you, Watty. I didn't even think of that. Just a detail. Just a detail. I'm afraid the Colonel didn't quite understand my explanation. Pardon me, get that. And this is the end of the roll, Colonel. Three dollars and 15 cents. That's all I got. Well, that's different, Mr. Bennett. I didn't just see it that way at first. <laughs> One, two, three. Do you smoke? Yeah. Get yourself a package of cigarettes. <laughs> well, Miss Emily, 50% it is. But the Colonel drives a hard bargain. Oh, don't mind the Colonel. He'll grow on you. He won't grow on me. You know, Watty, I sometimes think you're only marrying me for my money. <laughs> <laughs> tut, tut, tut. <laughs> now, here's the proposition. You put up $5,000 and I put up 5000 
Then we put the entire amount in an envelope. And you may keep that envelope in your possession until all the papers are drawn up. Is that clear? May I think this over? <laughs> what do you think, Chester? Well, as long as the money remains in your possession, I can find no objections. Very well. It's settled. That's <laughs> splendid. You know, that's the way we Cartwrights do things. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be at my hotel in the morning with the money and necessary papers. I'll be there. Goodbye, Mr. Bennett. Goodbye, Miss Emily. Goodbye. <laughs> Come, Watty. Yes. But, Tony, I only want the dough for a flash. It won't be out of your hands two minutes. And what about the show? I'm going to forget it. It's nothing but a headache. And what do I get out of the deal? This is getaway money. I'm willing to give you $1,000 for the loan of five grand for 10 minutes. 50-50. All right. And you think the old gal will fall for the envelope switch? Of course she will. How do you suppose I got the five to put in a show in the first place? <laughs> I'd hate to tell you, brother. You know, Ollie, I was just thinking. What about? Nothing. I was just thinking. Now, boys, have you got everything set on the envelope switch? Oh, sure. You realize we're going to make the switch first to beat them to it. You haven't got a thing to worry about, has he, Ollie? No. Now, after you've made the switch, slip me the original envelope with the money in it and tell me to get out and put it in the hotel safe. And I go. Well, what's going to happen to us? Well, you and Stan make some excuse to leave them and hurry down to the railway station. I'll be waiting there with the tickets. What about Susan? Uh, uh, she'll be there to meet us. Oh. Now, i got to get down and pay the hotel bill and get our baggage out. You boys better get set. They'll be here soon. All right. Right away. And boys, be careful. We're dealing with one of the toughest mobs in the country. I'm doing my best with him, Chester. One false move and we'll all wind up in the bottom of the Mississippi. Wrapped in concrete. Wrapped in concrete? Are you sure you've got that envelope routine straight in your mind? Certainly. I've more than got it. Let's see it. Now, I've got two envelopes. This one contains torn strips of newspaper, right? Mm -hmm. And this one contains $10,000. Now, Bennett gives me the $10,000. Mm -hmm. Then I give it back to him. I see, knew, I knew it. it. I knew it. Yeah. Now, this envelope contains torn strips of newspaper. Put that in your pocket. Now, I'm Bennett, and you are Stanley. Now, this envelope contains $10,000. Put that in your pocket. How can you give me the envelope back when I ask for it if you've got it in the other pocket? But you didn't ask me for the other envelope. Oh, give me the envelope. Here. Now, you are me, and I'm you. How can you be me when you're Bennett? You just told me you were... You are Bennett, and I'm Stanley. Well, where's Ollie? Oh, he's standing over there somewhere, anywhere. I don't get it. I just... Sit down. Sit down. We're practically wrapped in concrete now. At the bottom of the Mississippi? Yes, the bottom of the... Never mind the Mississippi. Where's 410? Right over there, sir. Thank you. There they are now. Are you sure you've got the money? Right, yes. Now, don't forget to be dignified. That's fine. <clears throat> Good morning, gentlemen. Good morning, Colonel. Good morning, Miss Emily. Good morning. Well, here we are, ready, willing, and able to do business. This is Mr. Queen, an associate of mine, Mr. O'Grady, and Mr. Taylor, who are also interested. <laughs> Charmed, I'm sure. Pardon me. <laughs> My advisor, Colonel Bixby. I call him Bixby for short. How did you do? I brought along the currency, Miss Emily, in thousand dollar notes, oh, five yes. of them. Yes, yes, of course. Five more. <laughs> Thank you. Now we'll put them in the envelope. As per the agreement. 
There you are. You hold on to it until the details are completed, Miss Emily. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, Mr. Wright. Ah, Mr. Bennett. Uh, my secretary, Mr. Wright. Mr. Queen. Mr. Queen. How are you? Well, that completes everything, Miss Emily. Good morning. Goodbye. <laughs> oh, by the way, for our uh, mutual protection, don't you think we'd better put a mark of identification on that envelope? Oh, I, I don't think it's necessary, really. Just a matter of business, Miss Emily? Well, maybe you're right. Eh, hey, Bixie? Mm, I think so. <laughs> Thank you. There you are, Miss Emily. Thank you. Well, that makes the deal as solid as concrete. <laughs> Maybe, Colonel, you better keep this for okay. Well, how about celebrating? Let's have a snort of bourbon. <laughs> Emmy means a little libation. <laughs> I think I have a bottle in the next room. And now, Miss Emily, if you'll just give me the envelope, I'll take it down and put it in the hotel safe. That's a good idea. Thank you. Good day, gentlemen. How about the bourbon, Bixie? I'll go right in and get it, Emmy, dear. <laughs> Pardon me, boys. You know, gentlemen, I'm one of those nip and tuck drinkers. What's that, Miss Emily? One nip, and it tucked me away for the night. <laughs> I feel so gay. <laughs> Did you ever hear the one about the... Jimmy, I can't find the bottle. Where'd you put it? Excuse me, I'll be right back. What a character. If I hadn't have seen it, I wouldn't have believed it. I told you to be a cinch. Hey, Jimmy, watch that door. What are you trying to do? Cross me? Cross you? I've been slipped the business myself. Catch that dame. She's stuck. They beat it. Let's get out of here. Oh, come on, sister. Oh. Where's that go? I haven't got it. Really. That secretary Stewart has got it, hasn't he? Yeah, Mr. Wright took it to the office. Bennett, if you're on this frame, it'll be just a slight case of murder. I'm not that dumb. We were taken. This pair's crooked. Where's Wright? That money belongs to Miss Cowan. You know very well you stole it from her mother. Oh, 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 oh. We were only trying to get it back for her. Oh, I wish you weren't a dame. Wright's probably on the way to the showboat to pick her up. That's our next stop, boys. I don't know who crossed who. All I know is I'm out five grand. And somebody's gonna pay it back to me or else. I was on the level on the play. I just wanted the dough for the old convincer. I was gonna turn it right back. Then you were played for a chump. There she is, Tony. Mm, so this is the little gal who dug up the pretty trap you walked into. Smart. Where's Wright? Come on, tell us. I don't know where he is. Where'd you see him last? Well, the other day when he was here with you. Don't they know? He's disappeared. I'm afraid he's hoodwinked all of us. We've been left holding the bag. <laughs> you framed all this. You know where he is. Come on, tell us. Lay off for a minute, Bennett. You mean to say that Chester was just fooling us all the time? That he never really intended to pay me back the money? I'm afraid he's made fools of all of us. Yeah, you and the two dames were stooges for a smart operator. And you fell for his gag like a corn husker from the wide open spaces. Hey, wait a minute. I got an idea. I'll take this joint over, open, just like you planned. Later on, I'll bring in the birdcage, the roulette wheels, and the dice tables. I can clean up. And you're gonna stay because I need you in the show. And I like you. I got an idea. We're gonna be good friends yet. You stick here and watch her. And Bennett. Me? Yes, you. You do a swell act. But I want to look over your lines a bit. Maybe you and Wright are planning to split 50-50. Well, just a minute. And take these two Halloween masks down to the boiler room and keep them there until I decide what to do with them. You're going to get a nasty letter from our lawyer for that Halloween crack. Get out. Chilly in here. 
Here, put this around you. Hey, Mike. Yeah? Go down and tell Joe to put some more fire in the boilers. We'll have the customers sitting on their hands in a minute. Okay. Hey, Joe. Boss says to fire up. People are freezing their ears off upstairs. Yeah? That's where you come in, buddy. Make with the shovel. Me? Yeah, you. And no beefs about it. Well, what about the... Oh, so you're one of those guys that have no respect for the opposite sex. Make with the shovel. Come on. Come on. Here's another nice mess you've gotten me into. I'm sorry. I... So... Now, smart guy, shovel every lump of that coal into that boiler. Would you mind handing me my shovel, please? Get out. No, no, no. Get out. Get Speaking sentimentally, this fix I'm in, I just can't minimize. Someone I love can't see my love, I've got to open his eyes. Am I sincere about somebody here about? I love him so I can't bear it. I'm not mentioning names. If the shoe fits you, wear it. The dreams I've had about someone I'm mad about, I don't know how to declare it. Must I play guessing games? If the shoe fits you, wear it. The minute he appeared in my vicinity, he must have known, I must have shown, it was a danger zone. I'm in a glow about some so-and-so about, I'll make him love me, I swear it. I'm not mentioning names. If the shoe fits you, wear it for me. Pardon the interruption, but now we choose to dwell a little longer on the subject of shoes. If you like your tootsies with the well-groomed look, tear a little coupon from your ration book. Mrs. J.P. Who's it? Or my lady's cook. Gotta have a coupon from your ration book. Does it matter whether the shoes are made of leather or not? With canvas and dust, ingenuity and pluck, what lovely creations we've got. So baby, let's go step and be a car or dear. Put your dancing slippers on and don't you fear Cause all God's chillin' got three pair a year Hallelujah, all God's chillin' got shoes Let's change the theme again, get on the beam again Somebody's love I must share it I'm not mentioning names If the shoe fits you, wear it for me
What's that? These are gas pills. Oh, that's exactly what I need. I got indigestion. But these are different. Shut up. Get shoveling. Will you get me a glass of water, babe? Yes, sir. Please don't take that. Oh, sit down, sweetie pie. I've had indigestion before. This is sure going to save my life. Boy, that's fine. I tried to tell you there were gas pills. Oh, take me down out of here. Oh, oh, oh. Get me out of here. Oh, 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 oh. Nice going, sister. It's not my sister, my mother. Come on, the dear. You know, there's, there's no reason why we shouldn't be friends. Good friends, kid. Listen, baby, if you'll string along with me, you'll be sitting on top of the world. We ought to celebrate at that. We'll drink to each other. I thought you'd begin to see things my way. <laughs> well, here's to you, babe. Good, eh? open. on the river. The shoal boat's running wild. Send out the river boat.
go below. Come on. Honey, I was on my way to the pier when I heard the showboat had broken loose. I hopped on the police boat and beat it over. Well, baby, what's the matter? What did you do with the money? I wired the money to your mother this morning. Look, there's the receipt. Oh, Chester. I'm sorry. Chester? Why? <laughs> Come on, baby, let's go.